Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown and Michael Nichols Pate. That's right, our entertainment rundown is back. After a few months off, we are back with the biggest news stories and just shooting the shit about what's been going on in the entertainment industry. So, Michael Nichols Pate, welcome back to the show. It's been so long. How have you been? Busy, 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 busy. Busy? That's not good. I know. I should be like <laughs> drinking wine and eating grapes and cheese and things on like a Grecian yacht, but my bank account has not caught up to that dream yet. So <laughs> your bank um, account is drinking uh, wine out of a box and eating grapes out of a plastic container. <laughs> I absolutely will not drink out of a box, um, but definitely the grapes in a plastic container, like on the back porch with one of those like circulating fans that hits me every once in a while. <laughs> oscillating fans insulating oscillating rotating whatever tomato tomato so there you go everyone three months later we still have the bitchiness that is michael and chris you're all welcome you're all welcome i know you've missed this everyone um so michael we aren't just going to be breaking down the last month of big news but we're going to be bringing down the summer of big news since last time we actually chatted was May for an entertainment rundown. We have recorded in the last few months, but we've not discussed the biggest news stories. So we have June, July, and all of August to catch up on because that's what we like to do. We like to punish ourselves. And yes, everyone, we're going to try and keep this to an hour and a half. The longer I talk now, the probably the chances are not going to happen that we're going to be into an hour and a half, but we are going to try our best to do it. So Michael, Big news stories. And are you excited to talk about what's been going on in the entertainment world? Yeah, there's some zingers of some stories. Going there, on. There is. And while we're talking about zingers, let's talk about the fastest man alive. And that's Ezra Miller and his behavior. Um, now, I don't know fully about the story. I'm assuming Michael's been paying attention to it a little bit more. So I'm going to let him explain to it, explain you uh, what this is all about. So, Michael, what what is the, the Ezra Miller behavior issue? Um, Ezra Miller was trying to fight every single person in Hawaii. Um, they had been arrested twice for just physically assaulting folks, like breaking into their house, physically assaulting them. They then fled to the mainland where they started a cult and had children on the cult, in the cult, and like a mother and like were living on this like compound, like loaded up with guns. And then when they decided that it wasn't where they wanted to be, they started driving across the country with guns in their car, trying to like recruit for their cult. But then as information came out, apparently when, he, when they were in um, UK filming, they like rented an Airbnb and started an artist's cult there too. And so apparently they've just been very much on this like mentally unstable, joyride train of fist fights and cult leading and like trying to fight everybody and it's it's been wild following it there is so much information and so much like every day someone new pops up and it's like Ezra Miller is all over the place uh, but recently after Warner Brothers said Ezra Miller if you don't stop doing this we're going to take your movie away now Ezra Miller, Miller has come forward and said that they are seeking treatment and they're going to be going into uh, rehab. And, and it's like... So when it comes to money, we always get rehab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was... So Amy wild. Winehouse had something right when she sang about rehab. Amy Winehouse tried rehab a couple of times. It was tough for, for her. Yeah. Um. So if I'm not mistaken, Vermont has a little bit to do with a story as well, right? Because that's where the cult was. That's where the yes, that's what I remember reading about that. I was like, why Vermont of all states? <laughs> Vermont. Like it makes oh, sense. <laughs> it make, if you're in the US, it makes sense. Oklahoma, sure. No. Ever, all these other places, sure. But no, let's go to Vermont. A gender uh, non-conforming person starting a artist's colony slash cult. Vermont makes perfect sense. Makes perfect sense. Um, 
is there a fallout from uh, The Flash for this? Because if you don't know, when he was in London, he was filming The Flash, which is okay. DC. I did no, 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 not a read, not a read. Just wanted to give you the heads up. Pronouns are they, them. Okay. So when they were in London filming The Flash, this is why we're longer than an hour and a half, everyone, because Michael always has to be the OPC replace. No, oh my God, no. Listen, I joke. they're problematic, but we still should use they, them. True that. Um, so we are... Uh, they are, they are, they were filming in London when they were filming the flash and now DC is basically holding up the flash and saying, if you don't get rehab, we are not playing this movie, which is pissing a off a lot of fanboys because of a second topic we're going to be talking about in a few minutes, but, uh, people are excited, uh, from what the reviews have already, the screeners that have been shown to test audiences. This is much better than Aquaman. This is much better than Batman versus Superman, the Snyder cut. So this is the movie that a lot of people have been coming from because, uh, um, Michael Keaton is back as Batman during this. So a lot of a lot of people are hedging their bets on Ezra Miller and will they, won't they release it is the big question that's on a lot of people's minds right now. If you were uh, DC Comics and Warner Brothers, would you be even contemplating releasing this or would you be trying to go back to the drawing board and try to reshoot all his scenes with somebody else? They... This is where I'm frustrated, and this kind of is where it broaches into the topic linked with this, which is the Batwoman, which it's very hard to talk about the two yeah. topics not together because it yeah. is very much like a poignant thing. Um, Batwoman got immediately scrapped versus... And, and literally, no literally after it's done filming, they were yeah. editing the film, and then earlier this month, in August, they said, we're not doing we're it not. anymore. We're cut cutting Batwoman and Scooby-Doo. And it, it just was, that's where I'm having difficulty because Ezra Miller is literally dr was driving across the country in like a cult van with guns. And with teenagers too. With if teenagers, I'm like child endangerment charges were filed, like CPS reports were filed. And like, this was what was kind of going on. And the next thing we know, uh, Batwoman's being canceled, but not The Flash. And it's like, yeah, The Flash is probably going to make them a lot of money and The Batwoman may not have. But it's like, we already finished it. Just throw it on HBO Max. It's like, oh, whatever. It, same, you know, with Amber Heard not really getting cut from Aquaman 2. It's just like, why are we saying fuck you to Batwoman when no one in the cast did anything like this? Yet these two situations are getting to yeah. exist. And, 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 oh, well, you better stop, Ezra, or we're cutting. Like, it should have been cut. Like, if you're going to say... If you're going to hold shit accountable, hold shit accountable. And if you're going to cut movies after you finish them that you don't think are going to make money, then you have to also cut things when people are engaging in actual criminal behavior. Do you think it's more the studio wants to bring Keaton back? Because that's my only suspicion of why they would even try to continue this on. No, it's because it's going to make them a fuck ton of money. Because of Keaton, do you think? No, because it's going to make them a fuck ton of money. Because it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be like the first Wonder Woman because it's already getting the reviews of that, like that it's very good. So it's going to make them a fuck ton of money because people are begging for a good DC movie. Because they haven't had one of those in... I I'll end that sentence there. I'll be here all night, everyone. I like uh, Christian Bale's Batman. I know I'm Batman. I'm vengeance. I'm Where's the Joker? <laughs> I'll make the pencil disappear. Um, so Batwoman's canceled. Ezra Miller isn't. <sighs> What's going on? What's going on in our society when a woman-led story, which this the idea of why they canceled Batwoman is still not I like fresh in my mind because they really didn't give an idea of why it was canceled more than it just, didn't test well well aquaman didn't test well wonder woman 2 didn't test well like the batman didn't test well like is there not a point and yet they're making three 
fucking Batman the or sequels because God forbid we actually let Robert Pattinson not do Batman ever again. Anyway. That was a three-hour movie that could have had an hour and 45 minutes and it cut out. It was a three-hour movie that could have been turned into a 1960s Batman, the uh, original movie, uh, TV series uh, show. But that's just me for you. No, that that's... was a, with Adam, Adam yeah. West? Yeah. No, that was whimsical and fun. That or the pow, bam. If I had graphic budget, I'd go bam, pow, zing, zinger. <laughs> No comment. Okay. Okay. It's been a long three months. Okay. I've been lost. I've been trying to figure out the entertainment stories that we'd be talking about upon our return. And here we are talking about Ezra Miller and his douchebag move of starting a cult in London and Hawaii. What the hell? Like, has he always been problematic? Yeah, they have always kind of been problematic. Have they? Yeah, sorry. Have... They've always kind of been problematic. It's just as now with the pandemic, it kind of has escalated. And once it started being that um, they were trying to fight everybody in Hawaii was when it uh, (laughs) kind of blew up and went all over. But yeah, now like people are coming forward from like years ago, even being like, yeah, they were engaging in stuff like this frequently. We we are going to stick on the same vein of uh, DC Comics here for a little bit. And that is the end of the official end of the Arrowverse on CW. Earlier this summer, CW, the channel, got sold to a Texan company and they have decided to cancel, cut, stop production on a lot of the Arrowverse uh, shows, including uh, DC Legends of Tomorrow, Batwoman, uh, I believe uh, Stargirl. I'm just trying to think of the other one. Stargirl is still there, but Stargirl, Superman and Lois and. The Flash is one more season. No, there's a third one that they're keeping, but like they're not in the same universe. Yeah, they've so after they after they spent seven years of merging everyone, they've decided no longer. It's not going to be that way. Um, it also canceled Riverdale. Pour one out for that train wreck. Do, 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 do you want a hug? <laughs> I, I might. I haven't watched the last season. Apparently it is wild. Okay. Um, so is this a smart move? I know this new company is kind of weird, but had the Arrowverse run its course? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. The, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's been... Ooh, it already has been done. They didn't, because they didn't have the rights to bring in a lot of the names they should have been bringing. Like Batman? Batman, (laughs) Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Um, And like, they didn't continue moving forward with picking like obscure heroes. They were so focused on, we have to have 8 million seasons of something because Supernatural had 8 million seasons of it. So like, we need to focus on these where some of these stories could have been three or four seasons, call it a day and then bring them in. Like we don't need eight seasons of arrow that five of the eight seasons were the exact same formulaic storyline. With Malcolm Merlin. <laughs> like a lot of these heroes, I'm not super, super familiar with DC, but many of them only had like one or two main villains. Yeah. They mostly fought together as a Justice League. I mean, if they had done like a, a million season Justice League thing and it was like a in the summer 10 episode arc, because like I know they do Super Gir- or Star Girl as 13 episodes, do something like that in the summer with all the different shows and then bring in other shows that maybe only needed two or three seasons, I think they'd be able to compete much better and it would have saved the CW. But also a lot of the shows have just gotten and like, like very political and like, yeah, I'm very much on that vein of like, we should care. We should be focused about it. But to the point where it was just overload and it was really ruining the story that like Supergirl specifically loved that show. And it just went full tilt, like nonstop politics. And I, I was watching Supergirl to shut off from the politics, not to continue to have it thrown in my face. 
So as you've just learned, everyone, Michael does not listen to my show because it's all about politics half the time. So your show is about Canadian politics. I'm not I Canadian. still listen to things that you do on a regular basis. I watch your plays, even though they're Americans and they spell color wrong. So don't come for me and say it's about, ooh, look at me. Color? Yeah. How do you spell color? It's C-O-L-O-R. No, it's not. It's C-O-L-O-U-R. Okay, we cannot fight about this. Hour and a half. <laughs> um, so is this the end of the uh, the TV cinematic universes that as we see it? Because um, they had a good idea at the beginning of this of bringing in the characters, doing this into a cinematic universe, but in TV format. But is this done? Is this over with? Will we ever see something similar to this ever again? It probably is done. And it's sad because it really did work for a good period of time. It's just, they were so focused on keeping like Arrow and the Flash and Supergirl kind of past where their prime was rather than let it end maybe at a fifth or sixth season and then say, we'll bring you it bring you in for like guest starring spots here and there and everywhere. Like, I feel like it was a great idea. And I really love the idea of like crossing over TV shows. Shonda Rhimes does it all the time with her shows. Um, and L- LA law or Chicago hope or Chicago fire and Chicago police and whatever you want to call it. I-, I agree. They do do it. It's just, is this the potential end of the superhero franchise of uh, TV? Well, no, because Marvel is doing it on Disney Plus now, because I think they... But that's streaming, right? Sure, but Marvel also is releasing one episode a week, so they're following the same timeline as, like, with what they were doing, but also Marvel's doing it smart. They saw what worked for the Arrowverse, and they're moving forward with that. I think that you could easily do, like, a primetime superhero thing and get away with it or like even any kind of like a supernatural type thing. I feel like you could create a really cool like television universe and do crossovers and stuff, but it's, you have to do it smartly. And I don't know if towards the end Arrowverse just was like floundering it. It was, and I, I can, I can be honest after I think Arrow canceled or Stephen Amell left the show and the Arrow ended, I stopped watching it. I stopped watching it on a regular basis because it became where you had to watch like nine shows to follow the storyline because there's always a tidbit in this episode of that show to, to make sure you know what this episode of that show was talking about. And I was just yeah. at a point where uh, with Marvel and Disney Plus, it is okay. We're going to do six episodes. It's going to be six episodes this week, but you don't have to watch twelve other other different shows at the exact same time to understand. It's here. It is. Here's your six episodes. We'll do a movie right afterwards, and then the next next series of next uh, superhero will be next. So they do it in a more uh, uh, strategic timeline. It's almost like it's an elongated movie and it is much more concise because they're not trying to fill. And this is my issue with American TV specifically because I've not found this as a thing across other kind of venue or not venues, um, mediums. American want, American TV wants to fill a 22 to 23 episode like block versus doing like what Britain will do, which is a 13 concise story. It makes more sense. You don't have so much filler. You may have one or two episodes of filler if it maybe needs like a tidbit here or there to understand the ending. But for the most part, like half of, over half of many of these shows is just filler episodes to fill that 20 to 23 episode season. Yeah, I, 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 Canadians do that as well. There's a lot of TV shows in Canada that, well, well, Schitt's Creek, right? Schitt's Creek was not 23 episodes. It was 10 episodes and, and it was very short, concise and uh, God bless CBC for doing an amazing thing because, well, we're just amazing that way. Mm -hmm. Canadians know how to do it correctly because, well, I'll just leave it at that. Sorry, I'm just looking up something for two seconds right there. Um, 
the next area I want to talk about, because you so much love talking about politics, I want to talk about politics for a little bit longer, because, but we're not going to talk about Canadian politics, because we know how much that bores you. So we'll talk about, <laughs> we'll talk about American politics. And I want to start with more of a, a the, the uh, politics of an apology. And that starts with the Academy Awards. So, um, Everyone remembers the slap heard around the world. And yes, we call it that because that's what everyone else calls it. And that is Will Smith slapping uh, Chris Rock and the calls for his uh, turf from the um, uh, Academy for 10 years, his ban on the Academy for 10 years was quite high. And people thought that was inappropriate. They should apologize to Will Smith for uh, boycotting him. And then it started the the great seedy underbelly that is the Academy Awards. And we, we, we remember, well, some of us who were of a certain age remember when Marlon Brando, uh, the late actor Marlon Brando won for Apocalypse Now. I believe it was, no, it was Godfather. Was it Godfather? Was it Godfather or Apocalypse Now? Uh, okay, he won an Academy Award, but he did not accept the Academy Award. He got uh, a, a person, uh, I forget her first name right now, Michael will probably. Sachin uh, Littlefeather. Sachin Littlefeather to accept the award, but she didn't accept the award. And in doing so, there were vile threats thrown at her. Uh, John Wayne wanted to get up from the audience and punch her and drag her off the stage. Her career in the media industry completely got destroyed. And earlier this month, the Academy, seeing their errors of their way from 1970s, 1980s, finally apologized to Little Feather in a non-apology apology of we're sorry this happened to you. We should have done more in at the time to fix this. Um, too little, too late, Michael? Yes. It also <laughs> only happened because of the slap and because people brought it up. They would have acted like none of this would have happened if Will Smith had not slapped Chris Rock. This is only because people were like, your problematic Academy. How do we fix it, though? We can't, we can't go back and change what's happened. How do no. we fix it? I mean, the way, I don't know if necessarily you and I as the average person can fix it. But I, I think, think we can, can, though, can't we? I mean, we can choose which media we consume and we can be more um, consistent and concise, uh, specifically with what Sachin was saying, was that she wanted the the depictions of Native Americans and first persons to not be what they were at the time, which was like these bloodthirsty savages, like very much the stereotype. We can consume media that depicts first person stories in a respectful way, like she had asked. And when we do see things that that is not the case where they do shift towards that, that are newer movies coming out, we can choose to not go see them and boycott them. <laughs> We also can demand more of the Academy for continuing to promote and, and look at and recognize uh, movies and film that are created and star marginalized communities. I mean, Oscars So White was a thing and still kind of is. And just because now they make sure to slap one person of color into each category doesn't necessarily mean that everything's resolved. And I think we just have to be more conscientious as a whole about the media we consume and the media we promote. But is there other apologies in the past that the Academy needs to apologize for? Because uh, while this was the most prevalent, like I can't think of any other because you're right. This only came about because of the slap and how uh, people felt Will Smith was being mistreated by the Academy, which brought up the idea that Little Feather, um, or um, I apologize, her first name is Sachim. Sachim, a uh, Little Feather, um, got treated in a, in a worse way, and the Academy did nothing. While um, is there any? I know you just typed something into your computer, so I'm going to ask the question: Is there any other apologies that the Academy needs to make? Yes, uh, Hattie McDaniel, um, she was in Gone with the Wind. She actually won an Academy Award, but she was not allowed to be in the actual 
building? A building. And so when she won the award, they like ushered her in, put her on stage to accept the speech and ushered her back out. And like the way she was treated, there frequently would be times where they would make her sit in the very back or they'd make her sit in like the kitchen when she would go. Like it's like, it's great that the Academy wants to apologize for shit now, but it's like not real apologies. It's like half-assed stuff. And I think really realistically, if they want to make amends, they need to start maybe even creating a scholarship in the name of these specific individuals that have been wronged and putting that money towards those marginalized communities to create media that is by those groups of folks. I literally was trying to figure out what year that was, but I was like, probably not that big of an issue. So never mind. <laughs> because at this time, we should be apologizing for yeah. the treatment. So yeah. I agree. On the same lines of politics, because we always like talking about politics on this show. Um, in the vein of Clint Eastwood, in the vein of Arnold Schwarzenegger, in the vein of Dr. Oz Mahit Maaz, Ben Savage of Mehmet Maaz, Mehmet Oz, uh, Ben Savage of uh, Boy Meets World Claim is running for city council in West Hollywood. Um, is this? Uh, I'm going to say this: actors need to act, and politicians need to politic. And when you cross some, it's just very hard. Um, should politicians get involved in politics? Uh, should uh, sorry, should actors get involved in politics? Do you think? I think everyone should get in politics. I think this idea of politicians needing to be just like doctors, lawyers, or career politicians is problematic because it's supposed to be governing the people by the people for the people. So it should be mailmen, male women, actors, waiters. Uh, bus driver. I mean, it should be a full group of people because when you just get the elite, you get what the U.S. looks like right now. A wow. dumpster fire. Wow. I said what I said. Okay, Mr. Independent. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not shocked. Um, Cor- uh, ben-, ben Savage hasn't really done much since Boy Meets World and Girl Meets World. And this is relatively a stepping stone. If you ever want to become governor of uh, the state of California, you start at council, then you start running up, unless you're Arnie, and then you run for <laughs> governor. Right? Thing. West Hollywood? Of all, He lives there? Straight people live in West Hollywood? I don't know what that means. Like, is West, West Hollywood... West Hollywood is like, is the gay neighborhood of LA. Um, it's where all the gay bars kind of are congregated, where a lot of the LGBTQ plus businesses are located. It's where a very large homogenous group of uh, queer individuals live. Um, it was very weird when a straight person runs because it's almost entirely LGBTQ run in that part of town. But Usually all the LGBTQs will know the show Boy Meets World if they grew up of a certain area. I don't think he has a chance, I'm going to be honest. He qualified this week. He qualified in the... uh, the... He won his primary? Yeah. I'm shook. Shook, shook. I would be surprised, so we will see what happens. And that's the only reason... What political party is he running under? I uh, There, I think it's independence. Council are all independents. I don't think he's got it though. He's running as that, but we'll see. I think they're all independents in West Hollywood. I think their council is an independent. If you're listening to this from West Hollywood, uh, and if I'm completely wrong, please send us the email and I will totally file it in the correct location. And we will make a clarification note in our November, October, September show. <laughs> Whatever show that is, I don't know, but we will make a correction in it. Um, but I want to talk about the biggest political news story, and that's the one that you brought to my attention. The best story! <laughs> I have been watching this from afar, and I find it quite interesting. So I guess the only question I have for you, Michael, is how many houses do you own in the, <laughs> the state of Pennsylvania? I guess not as many as Maymet. 
<laughs> so for those who haven't been paying attention to the news and I've been living under a rock on social media, uh, Mehmet Oz, who is the famous Dr. Oz of Oprah Dr. Oz, um, is running for a seat in Pennsylvania, uh, an open seat in Pennsylvania as a Republican against former, I guess I shouldn't say former, at, against Lieutenant Governor, Lieutenant Governor, um, John Fetterman of the Democratic Party. Now, for those, for transparency's sake, uh, Fetterman uh, had a stroke the day before his nomination, uh, for the day before the primary, and he's been out of commission since about, I would say, middle of August. And in in return, his opponent. Dr. Oz, Mamie Oz, is uh, May Met is a former New Jersey resident or a current New Jersey resident, depending on who you talk to, who is current. running. <laughs> and John Fetterman's team has been playing the social media game quite spectacular. It's gorgeous. So, Michael, what's your thoughts on this trolling from the Democrats? It's gorgeous and eat more of it. I mean, the Republicans do it all the time and the Democrats are like, oh no, we play nice politics. No, this is iconic. This is amazing, show-stopping. We love it. When he got fucking Snooky from the Jersey Shore to make a video, a cameo, and say like, hey, May Matt, oh my God, you're leaving Jersey. Why would you ever? Good luck on getting your new job and remember Jersey loves you and we'll see you back here real soon. Screaming. Screaming. You, you bring up a good point. Democrats are usually never ones to troll. No, and they're they usually really bad at it. Not Fetter, Fetterman seems to be like, he doesn't look like the typical politician. He does not look like a politician at all. He usually wears shorts and like a baggy shirt, like a t-shirt to his campaign rallies. And people seem to love him. Love him. And his attacks are like landing quite hard because it's not like he's making shit up about Oz. No. It's he's landing punches. Is this how the Democrats need to win? Yes. <laughs> this is what people are begging the Democrats to do. Begging. Well, we will see what happens because I'm always interested to this follow politics and well, with only a few weeks left until the uh, midterms, which happen in November in the United States. Um, oh, for those who don't remember, and this is the big one that has been making the rounds lately. Um, so do you like crudite? <laughs> when Wagner's going to <laughs> Wagner's. For those who don't understand, uh, <laughs> For someone who is trying to appeal to the blue cra a blue blue collar worker of Pennsylvania, you don't go in and call a veggie tray, even here in Canada, a veggie tray, a crudite, because that's what his wife loves. And Dr. Oz did a complete ep uh, commercial, which if we, I think we can actually, you know what, we're going to try and show it. If we get canceled, I apologize. But here's the commercial of Dr. Oz talking about his crudite and what that means. I thought I'd do some grocery shopping. I'm at Wegner's and I, my wife wants some vegetables for crudite, right? So here's a broccoli. That's two bucks. Not a ton of broccoli there. There's some asparagus. That's four dollars. Yep. Carrots. That's four more dollars. That's ten dollars of vegetables there. And then we need some guacamole. That's four dollars more. And she loves salsa. Yeah, there's salsa there. Six dollars. Must be a shortage of salsa. Guys, that's $20 for crudite, and this doesn't include the tequila. I mean, that's outrageous. And we got Joe Biden to thank for this. Michael, it's not Wagner's, is it? It's, Wag it's not Wagner's. What is it? I'm pretty sure it's Wegman's. <laughs> so how out of touch do you have to be to not know what a veggie tray is? <laughs> I mean, he literally could say a fucking carcucci board or a charcuterie board or something, and it would have made a crudite. What sort of nonsense? What sort of nonsense? And like, oh, I'm going to go to get some Philly cheesesteaks. And he went to like the tourist spots. Girl, you are an idiot. Oh, I can't. I cannot. Like, do, just do, do, do Amer are Americans paying attention to this? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. This is wild. This is like Jerry Springer. 
Okay. I mean, when you brought Snooki on, that's when I kind of like, why is Snooki weighing in on politics? And then I like have followed it. I'm like, oh, this is iconic. <laughs> I, I love it. I'm bringing, I'm here for I it. I need more. I need more of this. I'm a little shocked AOC wasn't the first person to do something like this. Yeah, I am too, actually, because, but Fetterman seems like that type of politician who's like, screw it. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? And he looks so monstrous too, right? Like, he looks so big compared to all, of, like, even him standing beside his wife, it's like night and day sometimes. And he also, like, is in a state that, and in a position where it might not go his way if he doesn't play hardball, whereas she's fine. Yeah. And his hardball is not that hard. It's calling Iconic. out Mamit for filing or Ma- Mamit or however. Mamet! Mamet for a hey, Dr. Oz um, for living with his <laughs> in-laws when he filed to run for the nomination for the Republican Senate primary. Like a week before <laughs> it was due, he yeah. moved in. Like, you're an idiot. I can't. I can't. We, we will certainly talk about this probably in a few other weeks because I guarantee you this has not died down. But all I can say is a crudite is my favorite new veggie board. <laughs> so let's turn to one of the big topics. And that's not big as in like one big topic, but I want to talk about celebrity news now. And celebrity news is always one that Michael usually loves to talk about because he has so much opinions on so many different topics. But I want to talk about our girl and our guy, Gigi 2.0, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez, finally getting hitched after all these years. Shocked, not shocked, surprised, not surprised. I don't care about them. It's really all publicity at this point. She finally, I think, was like, I just need a husband. And he was like, I didn't just need she, people to leave me alone. Didn't he have didn't she have like two husbands before her him? I feel like she's never officially been able to get the marriage followed through. Like she was married to Mark Anthony. Oh yeah, she was. And then she was married to um the baseball player. No, they never got married. Oh, they never got married. Okay. I'm pretty sure they didn't. I'm pretty sure they just were engaged. I thought they were married. Oh, you're right, because they called it off. And then he slept with that country girl. I don't know what that means, but I'm gonna say she sure. was on a like a TLC, like Real Housewives of the Country or some shit like that. Oh, uh, okay. Or Country Living or Country South or Charm School or I don't know. So she's ma- married to three people. Damn, good for her. Oja Noah? Don't know. Uh Chris Judd. Uh, American actor, dancer, and choreographer, and Mark Anthony, and now Ben Affleck. So he's she's been married four times. Meh, no. So you're not shocked? You think no. it's a PR? I do. I don't know. I'm just not like you go, girl, living your dream. Like whatever. Like I feel like it's just I don't know. I'm just not as like rah rah sis boom ba about it. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, next topic I want to talk about, but I don't know this, so I want my Michael to take this one away. Is Brittany and K-Fed? Is Hit Me Baby one more time back at it, or what's going on? Um, K-Fed put all these tweets out and videos out about how Britney Spears' kids don't want anything to do with her and shared a video of the kids from when they were like 10 and 11 years old where there was where they were saying like, we don't want to stay with you, mom. We don't like that. Blah, 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 blah. The kids are like 16, 17 now. And like, it's basically trying to be like, the kids don't like that Britney's like showing her her whole body on Instagram. And, you know, she's a bad mother. He's trying to get like full custody and like now bring his name up as being some great thing. And Britney like came out and was like, I can't believe you're using the kids for like emotional leverage here. Like, this is not okay. Like, I'm just trying to live my life. I'm not fighting for full custody. I'm just trying to have a relationship with my family and you are putting them on the news. She's like, I don't put my kids like on Instagram like that. I don't put my kids in the media like that. K-Fed's doing it to try and get some morsels of the Britney train that's currently going on. Is it still going on? Oh yeah, her family all constantly is trying to grab little crumbs and now K-Fed's jumping in and trying to be like the conservatorship was the best thing for Britney. I can't believe we would remove it and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, no one is willing to admit that this conservatorship was a good idea. 
anymore. Like no one is on that train anymore. And it's just, it's a lot. K-Fed needs to shut his mouth and stop grabbing for crumbs. But that's the way the world works, right? When you're a I D-list, know. when you're a D-list singer and backup dancer, all you can do is grab for crumbs sometimes. He needs to stop. Well, leave Brittany well, alone. Like he just needs to leave her alone. And she's fully like, why are you bringing the kids into this? True. Which good. I mean, she should say that. And like, he's like, they didn't even want to go to her wedding and it hurt them that they didn't want to go. Blah, 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 blah. And like, he's making it seem like he's the victim here for having to parent kids when Brittany was under her conservatorship and was not allowed to parent kids. Well, I, I think as long as this show goes on, we will continue to talk about Britney Spears no matter what. So I love her. So sure. Let's talk about someone I don't love though. <laughs> talk about Beyonce. Now, again, another story I have no knowledge about because anyone who's listened to the show, to the Beehive supporters out there, I do not like her music. I do not like her. I do not like anything that she's done. I can only say I know one of her songs and that single girls put a ring on it. Um, So what? Single ladies. Oh, man. Potato, potato. You don't even know the one song <laughs> title that you know. No, um, that she sings "Bootylicious," right? Uh, Destiny's Children do. Okay, well there you go. Um, so, Michael, take it away about what's going on in the lawsuits of lawsuits against Beyonce, which I oh. <laughs> chuckled about. <laughs> so you know she released the new album, right? The Renaissance. I was going to say Resistance or something. Renaissance. Um, it's all house music. Didn't she, get, as, didn't she get like yelled at for being ageist or something like that? Or fat phobic or something? Like she had to change one of her lyrics? Oh, because, ableist. Ableist, yeah. Yep. So that's part of it. So she released her album. It's house music. Anyone who knows house music knows that a lot of times you sample like a song over and over and over again and kind of create a beat that way. It's very popular in the ballroom scene. Um, so Beyonce, she creates this album. She uses a lot of popular artists that had little one hit wonder moments like Kellis's Milkshake and samples it, does not tell anybody and just runs with it and is now making money off of someone else's kind of work without their permission. And so Kellis came forward and was like, Beyonce, what, what the fuck? And then Beyonce got, had used an ableist slur and got like called out to change it especially after Lizzo had changed it in her song. So now Beyonce is being called out to do it. And then, um, oh my God, there's just been so much about this album. Oh, and then Monica Lewinsky came out and was like, Beyonce, can you keep my name out your mouth? Thank you. Seriously? Yeah, because she's Monica Lewinsky's name in a couple of songs and frequently in older songs and newer songs. So like everyone and their mother is like, Beyonce, what the fuck? And coming for her for this. So it... Uh, is the reign of the bee no. gone? No. Don't but she's it. definitely getting a lot of like eyes on the fact that people are not happy with what she's done. But people are already making apologies for her. Like, well, it's house music. That's common. You should know that. You should be grateful Beyonce's letting your out song be. That's not how in- intellectual property works, people. Not one bit. And like, I also get it. Like, please don't use my name. In your songs, like wow, I can't imagine uh, this is hurting album sales. Though I probably no. could imagine it's probably making album sales better. Well, Beyonce had this whole thing where you where there was four mystery boxes, and if, and it came with like a merch uh, album. Is that like what poster, this was all about? And it was for eighty dollars, and you picked a box you wanted, and you did not know what was in it. What the merch looked like, what the album looked like, nothing. You had not even heard a song, and they were already sold out. It is not financially responsible to support Beyonce. She's fine. Her album sales are fine. Jesus, Mother and Joseph. Why do people it is not like? Did you listen to the album? I did. We listened to it on the way home from Myrtle Beach, and, and it was. It was okay. I mean, it wasn't something I For those who don't know Michael that well, I'm going to let you into a little secret here. Whenever he inflects really, really high, it means that he's lying at that Mm -hmm. moment in time because Mm -hmm. he doesn't want the hate from the Beyonce lovers. 
but no, no, I really, it was okay. Oh, it was not, oh, no, was... it was, it was okay. It was just not, it was not for me. And Did I, and your I husband can, like it? Like a song or two. I mean, we, there was a couple of songs we were like, wow, these are great. Like the Break My Soul, that was a perfect solo or um, single for that album because it's probably the best song on the album. And then there's a, another song, I, I don't even know the name of it, but it's something about like drop it like it's thotty or something. It was vulgar, but it was fun. Like, wasn't Lizzo on it a bit or someone else? Madonna hopped on. Oh, okay. And they did like a cover of one of the, I want to say Break My Soul with Madonna um, and sampled Madonna's Vogue with Madonna. But it just, I'm not someone like house music for me is like fun. Like, yeah, if I was in the club and it came on and dancing to it, it'd be a lot of fun for me. I can't just like put my iPod on and like put my headphones on and be like, I'm just going to walk to house music or I'm going to like clean my house. To, it, it's not, or I'm going to drive in my car and listen to house music. It's not is quite it being well received though. I think so. I mean, people are really liking it. I have a lot of friends who are like living and dying by this album right now. I just, it's just not anything. I hate the gays. <laughs> no, not even just gay folk, just across not the board people. Folks. No, across the, I'm going to fight you. Across the board, people are liking it. I just, like I said, I can acknowledge when I don't necessarily like something, but I can recognize that it is good house music. Like in terms of it being that genre, it's great. It really, it fits the genre. It does what it needs to do. Is it the best house music I've ever heard? No. Is it good still? Of course. Let's just bring back single girls, okay? I'll listen to that one, okay? If you like it, you had to put a ring on it. There you go. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> See? See? Um, so how are you? <laughs> I'm great. So you're uh, trying no, to get me canceled over here. I would never do that. I will say, though, that the entire time during that conversation, this is how much interest I had in that conversation. I, know I, kept, you don't. I kept looking at your shirt, then looking at my shirt, then looking at your shirt. And I'm like, oh, we're like Christmas, red and green. Oh, my God. I'm screaming. That's how much interest I cared for. <laughs> um, the next uh, is still in the vein of... Uh, uh, celebrity news. I want to talk about Jonah Hill's decision to stop promoting movies due to his mental health. Um, I'm, I'm a proponent of making sure you have great mental health. I think if you need support, you should always get your support. Um, celebrities, that's their job though, right? Like if I'm, if I'm doing a movie, I'm required to go out and promote the movie. Like, Go do the rounds of Jimmy Fallon, Stephen Colbert, like Jimmy Kimmel, do the interviews with all the local entertainment pundits. What's your thoughts on people stop promoting shows or movies because their mental health is taking it a hit? Y'all remember Monique? Nope. She was in Precious. She was the mother. Oh, the one who won the Oscar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all remember her? Yeah. What movie has she been in recently? None. Yeah, because during Precious, she wasn't doing the rounds because she was mad at Oprah and wasn't going to do it. Okay, so... It, it's, it, is, it is part of your job. I also fully recognize that, like, mental health-wise, we have to take care of ourselves. Anxiety is a real thing. PTSD is a real thing. All these things exist. But at the same time, it is part of being involved in the movie to do the rounds to some degree. I mean, I do think that interviewers ask some vulgar, wild, left-handed, right-handed, backwards questions sometimes to where it's like, why are you asking me this? This doesn't, this shouldn't be a thing. Yeah. So I, I recognize that and wanting to maybe pull back because that's a constant thing that's popping up. But at the same time, it is part of your job. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite. Be sure to hit that subscribe button today to be kept in the loop of all the great episodes that are coming up on the show. Also, click on the links in the show notes and follow our social media pages as well. 
Welcome back, everyone. Uh, the great things about internet, the great things about audio. We do have hiccups from time to time. So here we are back to talk about the remaining issue of Jonah Hill not doing PR for some of his movies or all of his movies moving forward. Michael, you were in the middle of something before uh, we stopped. And I just want to give you some time to continue on with your statement. and But back up to originally what you were going to say about how it is their job in at the end of the day to do it. Yeah, I'm curious to see if he gets cast in things. I'm curious to see where his career goes moving forward with regards to this. Um, just because people that don't want to do the promotion and don't want to do the rounds tend to not get cast. Brandon, I'm pretty sure he's been producing a lot of his own stuff lately. I don't even, like, I can't remember what he was last in, to be honest. Don't look up. Okay, and I don't remember him doing anything for that. But he wasn't really the main character. There was no... no. So, <clears throat> I don't remember the last time he was a main character where he drove the story, right? Like, even Moneyball, he wasn't the main character. So, I could be wrong, but I just don't see how someone who has made a career on movies doesn't need to promote movies going forward. Yeah, and like I said, I'm curious to see how this goes, where this goes, because I do think as a whole, that specific realm needs to change. Like, especially if you're going to do a, a promotion tour for your movie, they need to stop asking crazy questions that just have nothing to do with the movie. I agree wholeheartedly. Agree wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. Um, my last celebrity news that I want to talk about before we move on to the next realm is uh, Brendan Fraser. Now, for those who don't know who Brendan Fraser is, he was supposed to be in the Batman, Batwoman movie, but that got canceled. Uh, he was in the original Mummy, uh, The Mummy Returns, The Mummy, The Tomb of the Dragon and the Warrior. And he is in a upcoming movie after being out of the spotlight for a few years called The Whale, where he plays a 600 pound man who, uh, after his husband dies, he, um, after his husband dies, he, he eats, he finds comfort in food and he balloons up to 600 pounds and he loses his relationships with his daughter and his uh, family. And this movie is making the rounds on uh, so, uh, uh, the uh, film, tele the film festivals. And recently he was nominated and he won uh, at TIFF, Toronto International Film Festival. Um, Michael, while Oscars is not till March of 2023, is this the time when movies like this start coming out? And is Brendan Fraser... Um, because people are already predicting that he's going to be nominated for Best Actor for this uh, movie. Is this Brendan Fraser's year to come back? Absolutely. I mean, Brendan Fraser is someone people have been clamoring for, and especially after everything came out about how he was treated, the abuse he suffered, all of that. He, people have been begging for him to come back because everyone really always liked Brendan Fraser. And who didn't like George of the Jungle? If you didn't like George or the, of the Mummy, Jungle, everyone's favorite movie. Exactly. I love The Mummy. Exactly. But I'm not super familiar with the film. Uh, it's not officially out yet. I have not seen it, but all I've heard, uh, it's by the same people who did uh, Silver Lining Playbook and American Hustle, David. Uh, uh, I forget how to pronounce his last name. The director who did those two movies wrote and directed this, but this movie is supposed to, it's, it's, it's basically everything that Oscars love. It's gay. Yeah. It's prosthetics. It's a guy who had to gain a lot of weight to look, uh, to act the part. So, but is this usually the time that movies start coming out? That is Oscar bait. I feel like we're a, a month or two away. I feel like it's more around the like late October to December range that we start to see stuff. The only reason I say that is because in August last year, this is when Spencer with Kristen Stewart came out. Yeah. And um, Tammy Faye came out, I believe, August or September as well. Yeah. It's, it's like, yes, stuff comes out now, but typically like the big, big like bulk of movies that are going to be nominated are all going to trail out between uh mid-october and 
December. Are you ready for Oscars 2023 and for me to finally beat you at my predictions? <laughs> okay, sure, we can go. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to this movie. I'm looking forward to The Whale. It, it, it looks good. Uh, the, the videos, the, the, uh, the photos that I've seen of it look amazing. And I'm a sucker for Brendan Fraser. I always liked him growing up and I think he's one of the most underrated actors that we have. And he lo- he was out of Hollywood for some time and it's time to bring him back. I don't know if I like the title, but I'm sure that has something to do. Is it based on a true story? I don't know that. It's based on a book. I know that much for sure. Okay. Yeah, I don't love the title. But I, I can tell you right now, uh, based on a play, by the same name, by Samuel D. Hunter. Okay, so it's an adapted, okay. Yeah. Um, um, Darren Aronofsky is the director of it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and uh, six. so these the synopsis, the premise of it, a 600-pound middle-aged man named Charlie tries to reconnect with his 17-year-old daughter. The two grew apart after Charlie abandoned his family for his gay lover who later died. Charlie then went on a binge eat out and of pain and guilt. Okay. So I think it's it's going to it's going to do well. It's what the Oscars like. If anything it Brendan Fraser will pro, and it will probably get nominated. It's going to be probably Eyes of Tammy Faye. It's going to pick up the same awards, not necessarily for best actress, but who knows, it might be Life-changing. It's just, there's going to be a ton of stuff that comes out right after it, closer to when nominations happen, that people are going to have pressure in their brains. Yeah, but this one's already making the rounds at the Venice. Uh, so it was premiered at the 79th Venice uh, International Film Festival, or it will be premiered uh, on September 4th. And then it's uh, uh, going to... Re- uh, Brendan Fraser uh, is set to receive the Tribute Award for performance at the 2020 Toronto International Film Festival on September 11th. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I think I like Brendan, so that's, that's, cool. that's where I go with that. Let's talk about the last thing, because we are coming up on the hour and a half mark here, and I want to make sure we stick to that hour and a half mark just for... Uh, everyone's sake and that is the tv industry let's go back to the tv industry um are we out of ideas on good shows now because the tv industry is planning reboots of ally mcbeal reboots of frazier reboots of night court reboots of fresh prince of bel-air which i'm not sure even did well or is doing well um is is entertainment world in hollywood losing ideas on how to create a good show because they even did a reboot of talk uh, texas a walker texas ranger they're doing a reboot of supernatural with the stories of the the uh, the parents like are we just out of good ideas i think that you're seeing tv shows trying or network tv trying to compete with streaming and so they're trying to go okay what can we redo or what can we do to bring people to like buy cable? Because cable is dying. Yeah. People don't have it anymore. People don't want it. You can pay for streaming services you like and not have a long list of everything. And I'm going to be honest, people are sharing streaming services. So it is cheaper in a sense to, some, to just kind of share a password and call it a day. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that they're trying desperately to keep anything they can and to keep people doing paying for cable, watching their network, because that's where they do get a ton of ad revenue. And they but do get even a ton then, of money. even then, like shows that pre, uh, like are on TV usually end up on these streaming services like four days later. Oh, well, depends on the situation because the CW does not put the full season on Netflix until after it's aired completely on TV. I uh, know, but like <laughs> Disney Plus, right? Like if you're watching uh, Family Guy or Simpsons, um, they air on the Sunday. By Wednesday, you can watch that new episode on Sunday on Disney Plus. So you don't even need cable. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's. I. I mean, I'm so used to just when I watch Disney Plus, I watch Disney Plus on whatever the show is or whatever. I mean, it's gotten to the point where like we are even considering just fully getting rid of the cable, just because the only thing we've been watching that's on cable is I watch Jersey Shore, which I'm pretty sure I can watch on Paramount Plus alone, like as the thing airs. And RuPaul's Drag Race, which RuPaul's Drag Race will not appear on any streaming service in the U.S. other than cable TV. 
Don't you mean WoW World? No, nope. it will not premiere there in the U.S. until really? like a year after it airs. Really? Mm-hmm. So you have to watch it on cable TV if you want. Unless to. it's All Stars, right? Because All Stars is on Paramount Plus. In this yeah, All Stars is on Paramount Plus, but the RuPaul's Drag Race and Secret Celebrity RuPaul Mask Singer whatever is on VHS. RuPaul well. needs more money, so we're going to come up with a new brand new show of how to do this. It's so that's. That, I mean, other than that, like, we really don't watch cable TV. Yeah, we don't either. We rarely do. And they, usually if it is, it's for, like, news. But then even then, we're finding that it's all on YouTube half the time. Or Twitter. Um, yeah, yeah, we try not to go on Twitter that much. Um, the last question for you, and then we'll wrap up here, Michael. What are you watching? What are you excited for coming up? Anything? Um Dead air. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Um, uh, I mean, I'm watching She Hulk. I'm watching Sandman. I'm watching uh, Lock and Key. I'm watching Umbrella Academy. So I've like started so many TV shows that I'm like, we'll watch an episode or two a night because I'm trying to read more and like not engage with television as much. I know, I know. Is I'm this like, why we don't talk anymore, Michael? Oh You've my God, you better, st- <laughs> you better stop. Um, I, I mean, it's just a lot of the stuff television-wise, it's just getting fairly... It wasn't the summer of the blockbuster, was it? It wasn't the summer of much of anything. I feel yeah. like it's been kind of boring. Yeah. Wise. Um, I heard good things about Black Phone, but I haven't seen it yet. Ethan Hawke's not an actor I'm clamoring to go see. Um, I, oh, I did watch the Thor, the new Thor. But I have, did you watch, uh, um, oh my God, what is it? Uh, the House of Dragon, the Game of Oh, Thor. I did watch that. I don't know who none of these people are. And I want to know who did the wigs because they should be drawn and quartered because the wigs are atrocious. And Matt Smith's wig is pulled like all the way back. He has a six head. And you can see the lace on the wig. Who in editing didn't do a good job? Hence why we had a Starbucks cup in uh, the last season of. <laughs> I just, I, I like, and of course I'm crazy. So I always want to like, look at the wigs and see if I can find the wig line. Um, are you excited for, are you excited for Saturday though? Next Saturday? What's next Saturday? The uh, Emmys? No. One what? ring to rule them all. Oh, yeah, that's coming out. Lord of the Rings. I don't know when nothing is. The only reason I know that is because my husband's birthday was this past Sunday and all the family members were talking about it. So I'd, uh, I I got all the gossip because I wouldn't have known that if I didn't know. So I wouldn't have known that if I didn't know. Love that. Wow. That was a journey for me, Chris Brown. Welcome to the team. Um. Uh, anything you're excited for? Anything returning? Like Lord of the Rings? <laughs> oh fuck! I am excited for it, but like I didn't know when it was coming out. Amazon Prime. Um, I don't know. Like, there's not I, really much, eh? Like, I have not seen any movies that I like with no TV and no cable. I don't get the commercials throwing in me like 24 seven. So I did watch the Sandman. I did watch some of the Sandman. We're currently going through that. We're on like season episode five right now of 11. So that's not bad, but Oh, I I'm going through a Bob's burger kick. I'm on like season eight of 12. And I can tell you that I don't know why I started, but I feel like I've gotten so far in. I need to finish it. just to say that I finished it and never watch it again, but it's not bad. Um, I'm rewatching the magicians. Oh, that's right. You were saying that you were what you. I also read the book. Yep, book was great. Totally different from the television program. Are we going to have to start a new segment on the show where we talk about books? Because I'd be totally in favor of that. Oh, I mean, we can. We can start a book club. (laughs) Let's start a book. You and I, but you and I want to read very different books. But I would read your book, and then you would read my book, and then you would go, "Why the hell did I read this, Chris?" I go, "Because we're in a book club." And then you'd be like, "Why the hell did I read this, Michael?" And I'd say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Michael, it, 
It's always a pleasure to chat with you. It's always a pleasure to chat with you about upcoming news. But I, I, I do leave on this question of all questions. Where in the world's Jason Derulo? Jason Derulo. <laughs> I gotta go. Have yourself an excellent day. Uh, Remember, get it from behind social media for at least five minutes a day and go talk to someone that helps their democracy, helps their society, and helps us be a better people. With that, have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, keep talking.